asking, should we put tobacco-style warnings on ultra-processed foods? Boris Johnson is calling on the government to do this. In this Daily Mail column, the former prime minister says that people don't know what they're feeding their families and there's too many extra ingredients. That's why I'm asking, should we put tobacco-style warnings on ultra-processed food? Well, joining me now to discuss, Steve Miller, former presenter of Fat Families, Helena Davidson, campaigner and policy expert at the Vegan Society. Right, so I'm going to start with you, Steve Miller. What do you think? Oh, I'm applauding Boris today. Good on you, mate. Uh, and the reason for that is we know that the research on uh, cigarette, you know, the warnings on cigarettes, I should say, when those warnings were visual, they worked very well. In fact, I was reading a PubMed bit of research on that today. That's the first reason. The second reason on a practical level is that we need to start stop looking and listening before we start, you know, grazing and putting mm. things in the trolley. And the third thing is that, you know, these kind of signs or these warnings, I should say, are kind of hypnotic. They trigger the emotion. So they're much more likely to get people to think and, and maybe resist rather than what we've got at the moment, which is a very complicated uh, set of information about the nutrition that the vast majority of people can't be bothered to read and actually don't understand. So I say bring on the pot belly. <laughs> Helena Davidson, what do you think? Yeah, so the, at the Vegan Society, we're broadly in favour of increasing consumer knowledge um, when it comes to the nutri nutritional value of people's food. Um, but I think it's important to mention that ultra-processed food isn't an issue that's exclusive to vegans. And whilst most meat alternatives will fall into the ultra-processed food category, it largely depends on how we're going to look at how UPFs are going to be assessed because vegan um, alternatives that are fall under ultra processed foods they're actually on average healthier than meat products or ultra processed foods that contain animal products really? so i think it depends on how we look at it we might have to take a closer look at the nutritional profile of individual foods rather than the level of processing so helena are you saying that so so like a vegan sausage is actually healthier than a an actual sausage yeah, so most meat alternatives, they have lower saturated fats, um, which is linked to high cholesterol, and they are higher sources of protein. They have fibre and iron and zinc, and fibre is a major issue with UK diets at the minute. Um, lots of people are lacking the essential fibre nutrients that they need. Um, so it depends on basically what, what kind of analysis they're going to be using, because some ultra-processed foods can be healthier than others. Steve Miller, is, does this, is this the case that meat, I, I'm sorry, I'm struggling to, to accept that, that meat or say, say it's like a, a sausage would be worse for you than a vegan sausage? We are a nation of fat faffers, aren't we? We seem to talk about, you know, all of this waffle all of the time. We talk about policies. We talk about, you know, compare that sausage with this sausage. Listen, let's start using a bit of good old common sense. Mm. I agree with the your other contributor. Yes, do do a good analysis to identify what is uh, an ultra processed food. Mm. Fine. But then what Boris is saying is order? start putting a more blunt warning on the foods that are uh, ultra uh, processed foods to get people to stop and think because this nation is getting fatter and fatter. We are a nation of jelly belly jumbos, whether mm. we like that or not. And, you know, Boris's suggestion isn't fat shaming. It's actually life saving. So I say bring on what he's saying. And yes, I'm sure if Boris uh, takes his own medicine, he will go from a put to a stud, frankly. <laughs> Well, let's bring on Lucy Barrisford. She's a, a psychologist and she can give us a thought on that because, Lucy, this whole conversation is actually about the labelling. Should we have some sort of warning on there? Because, you know, I, I, don't, I don't like any of the, the false sort of vegan kind of regurgitated food that isn't, you know, when you're saying it's a sausage, it's not a sausage, I don't know what's in it. Should we be putting this sort of warnings on food? Well, I, I came into this conversation at the phrase jelly belly jumbos, so I really want to pay attention to the language that everyone's using. The problem is we can only really make good choices for ourselves if we have good information. Mm. And we all metabolize food differently. We're all different body types. Some of us are slim boned, some of us are big boned. We process food in different ways. As long as you know 
what you're actually eating, then you can make a more informed choice. So you have to have this information on the packaging. You have to be given those skills. If it was the nanny state, which is the criticism I often hear, mm. then the, the nanny state removed those products from the supermarket shelves in their entirety. And that isn't what's happening. What's happening is that people are being given information, which means they can then make a choice that's right for them. And frankly, we do sometimes need a little bit of salt, a little bit of fat. We need good fats. We need good sugars. So it isn't enough to just say this food is good and this food is bad. It needs to be much more nuanced. Well, Boris is talking about like a warning, like on a tobacco package to warn you of actually eating ultra processed food. And, um, you know, I think we should know what's in it. Uh, Helena, do you think that that sort of warning then, because there'd be a lot of the vegan processed food that will have the warning on there if it's ultra processed? Yeah, exactly. That kind of takes me back to what I was saying before. Um, I don't think that a blanket warning style label would work because these individual foods are going to have really different levels um, and different types of nutritional profiles. So you kind of have to look at it in a more thorough manner instead of just putting a blanket label across um, and a lot of people when they want to reduce their animal intake they do go towards alternative products because it reminds them of what they're familiar with mm. so they won't want to you know not have these options available or be scared away from choosing them um, just because of a blanket label that's been put on them. Okay. Um, well let me let me come to you very briefly then each one of you uh, should we keep these should we put these kind of tobacco, tobacco style warnings on ultra processed food yes or no Steve absolutely 100 percent Helena yes or no um I would think it yeah yes but we need to have a bit more yes better, um, so it's a yes cool thank you for that and Lucy Beresford yes or no Absolutely, yes. Keep people informed. 